the magic paintbrush. Go and catch some shrimp, Shen. Go and catch some fish. Go and gather oysters to fill the empty dish. Shen sits on the seashore. A stick is in her hand. She sits there drawing pictures, pictures in the sand. She draws a flower, a flying fish. She draws a boat at sea, a hen, a hare, a dancing dog, a weeping willow tree. The waves roll in and wash away the pictures in the sand. But on a rock there sits a man, a brush is in his hand. He looks around, he calls to Shen. Come here, he whispers. Hush, we don't want all the world to know about this magic brush. He slips the brush into her hand and tells her to be sure, never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. Did you catch some shrimp, Shen? Did you catch some fish? Did you gather oysters to fill the empty dish? No shrimps, no fish, no oysters. Shen laughs and runs inside. She paints a pot, then stands and waits until the paint has dried. The paint dries on the paper. The painting of the pot is not a painting anymore, but real and steaming hot. The pot is full of shrimp, Shen. The pot is full of fish. The pot is full of oysters to fill the empty dish. The village people hear the news. Into the house they crush. The young and old all want to see Shen and her magic brush. She paints a melon for a boy, a ladder for a man, a basket for a woman, and for a girl, a fan. And soon the news spreads far and wide, and people stand in queues for blankets, boats and buffaloes, for hats and coats and shoes. The news spreads over fields of rice, over desert sands, until at last inside Shen's house the powerful emperor stands. I order you to paint a tree and make it very big. Instead of leaves, paint golden coins, a hundred on each twig. Shen shakes her head. Your majesty, I promise to be sure never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. The emperor scowls and stamps his foot. He bellows to his men. Seize this magic paintbrush and seize this girl called Shen. Now Shen sits in a prison upon a cold stone floor. She waits there till the emperor opens the prison door. He holds the magic paintbrush. He orders, paint that tree. Paint me my tree of golden coins and then you shall go free. She takes the paintbrush and bowing low says, Greatest Majesty, come back here in the morning and you shall have your tree. That night, the Emperor lies in bed and dreams about his tree, while Shen is busy painting, a horse and then a key. The key turns in the prison door and Shen stands free outside. She climbs onto the horse's back and swiftly starts to ride. Where are my coins? The Emperor shouts. Where is my golden tree? Where is the magic brush? He cries. Who let this girl go free? He climbs onto his fastest horse and rides with all his men. Over the fields and desert sands, they gallop after Shen. It's Shen, it's Shen, she's back again. The neighbours gather round. But Shen is painting silently while distant hoofbeats sound. She paints a mighty river, a river deep and wide. The emperor and all his men stop on the other side. The emperor scowls and stamps his foot. He shakes his fist at Shen. I'll swim across your river, and so will all my men. But Shen is busy painting, a beast with scales and claws. Its scarlet wings are open, and flames curl from its jaws. My dragon needs a tail, says Shen, and then it will be real. Yes. Then it will be roaring and ready for a meal. Now, shall I paint that tail? She asks. Or would you rather go? She dips her brush into the pot. The emperor cries out, no. 
he turns his horse and rides away. Away ride all his men. Shen takes the magic paintbrush and starts to paint again. She paints a mound of golden rice and cakes like little moons and drums and flutes till all the streets ring out with merry tunes. The sun goes down, the moon comes out and shines as bright as day while Shen and all the villagers dance the night away.